What radio, the music you want. With your host, he's Dan. It's Doc Radio, you're on the air. Radio what? Dot com. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. Today on the program, ooh, Heston Cleveland. Heston Cleveland's a music producer out there in California, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about what Heston Cleveland is into. And you have that to look forward to in the next few minutes in your ears. This week's public shows, let's see, Thursday night, I'm at the Old Post Barbecue in in, uh, Russellville, Arkansas. That's the video dance party, karaoke jam. Yeah, you're the stars of the show. It's family friendly. I am your humble DJ, and uh, I'll be spinning, you know, some uh, family favorites, some some clean stuff. So it's a good after-school treat for the kids. They have the best barbecue on the planet, in my opinion, over at the Old Post Barbecue in Russellville, Arkansas. They also have frosty beverages for the adults, in case you care to imbibe. That's from 6 to 9 at the Old Post Barbecue in Russellville, Arkansas. And then on Friday night, Friday night, my usual Friday show is at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. That's the video dance party, karaoke jam. Yeah, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show whenever I'm around. It's probably going to be karaoke. I'll have it there. It's available. You know, I'd like to DJ for the people, but, you know, some people like to sing. So you can sing if you want to. They got a full bar. Now, this this show is not for the kids. This one is an over 21 party. So that's the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Starts at 8 p.m. They got the full bar, the kitchen with the burgers and the pizzas and the chicken wings. They also have 10, count them, 10 pool tables. There's a pool tournament on Friday nights at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Out on the party patio, they got shuffleboard and foosball, darts, giant jam a game checkers there's always something to do over at the rab while you're waiting to sing with little old me yeah and then saturday night Ooh, saturday night i have a private party you can't come i mean unless you're invited but you know i like to party with the people a private party i think it's out in if i'm not mistaken it's in pottsville arkansas yeah not too far away from where i'm at in conway arkansas All right, party people, it's time to talk to Heston Cleveland and find out more about what he's doing in the music biz. Calling Heston Cleveland now. on time <laughs> heston cleveland please speaking fantastic it's keys dan with the what makes you famous podcast how's your day man my i got up this morning so the start of the day was good and it's beautiful well all right well it sounds like you had a story to tell heston cleveland give the people a little idea of who you are well first of all my name is Heston Cleveland. My friends call me Hess, H-E-S-S. I was blessed to be born to the legendary William Cleveland, which was Bill Cleveland. And my mother had the golden voice, Carrie Cleveland. I grew up in a household of musically inclined people. My dad played the keyboard and the drums. And I guess back then you called it the synthesizer. So he was literally a one man band. Yeah. And my and my mom had the golden voice. And you know, to tell the truth, 
I took it for granted. You know, I mean, I could stand to listen to it. And right. actually, I thought they were pretty good, you know. But I heard it every day, you know, every day, all day. My dad had a a studio garage. I'm sorry, a garage studio. Yeah. And uh, music all the time, you know. I got a glimpse of how good they were when they auditioned for um, house band at the Claremont Hotel. And where is that? That's in Berkeley, in the Berkeley Hills. It's a big, beautiful, old-style hotel. All right. Uh, Hess, yeah, Heston, Cleveland. You're a California man. When were you born? California, Oakland, California. And when was that? Oh, man, you're going to have me tell my age. Hey, I'm 50 years uh, old. I'm happy about that. I I'll shout it from the right hey, rooftop. You know what? You know, you know what? Uh, you right. You right. Uh, I'm, I'm 56 years old, born in 1963. Excellent. In California. And you grew up with some talented hey, parents. So growing up, usually kids just want a mom and dad. But you had, you had a, I would dare to say, an exceptional mom and dad. So tell me what you took away from your parents. You, you took away from your dad his synthesizer skills and then from your mom her golden voice. How did that affect you? <laughs> As they say in church, uh, make a joyful noise. <laughs> That's what I could do. Excellent. No, but seriously... I used to I used to DJ. I like it. I was I was a pretty good DJ. Sometimes I would go with them and set up, and I would perform in between uh, their sets. Okay. You know, spin a few records. Yeah, but uh, what, what I tried to start play doing the this? saxophone. Uh. Early eighties. Early eighties. All right, all right. So yeah. the the early days, you were playing as as the the background music for for the band. Say the band did a forty minute set, you took that twenty minutes and you and you showed your skills on the ones and twos. What was your equipment like? Well, it was to tell the truth, it was top of the line. I had to, you know the. New Mark mixer and uh, uh, 1,200 turntables. Ah, techniques. The and, best. The standard. The yeah, gold and, standard. You know, I was pretty good. I, I was good enough to wear Too Short. Uh, I auditioned for him. Okay. Too Short. Very respectable and, rapper. Yeah. The only reason I didn't get the job is because he took, we hung out all day. Cause you know, uh, in Oakland, we're around the same age. You run in the same circles. So I knew him already. Right. But he hung out with my wife at the time and my son. And you know, we walked outside. He said, Hess. You're good, and I'd use you. But come on, man. You know you know what we do after the show? Uh-uh. And I just put my head down because I understood he was looking out for my, my best interest. So because, you're saying he's uh, in a fast life, maybe? Supersonic. <laughs> Wait, that's not, that's not too short. Supersonic. I know JJ Fad. <laughs> hey, yeah, all three. I mean, he would, he could, he could drop a shoelace and they would fight over it after the show. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's it's kind of hard yeah, to have a, a family life if you're, if you're hanging around with a crowd that's just, uh, you know, maybe living a little faster than you want it to be. So. 
what did you say to Too Short when he turned you down? I didn't understand at first. You know, um, I was kind of hurt. But after, you know, the excitement died down and I thought about it, he was right. Hmm. He he was right, you know, so, so I, I so, respected him. For it. So Heston, uh, Heston Cleveland, by, by the early 80s, you were already a married man with a child or, or you were just dating your soon-to-be wife? No, this was uh, late 80s when that happened. Okay. And my son, I was living as a family man. We didn't get married till 91, but we were, we were living together 87, 88. <laughs> I'm not completely familiar with the California laws, but I, I believe that's common law already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. All right. Yeah. Well, so, uh, yeah. So, you know, um, so then, you know, I, I didn't DJ for him, but I DJ for a couple of local rap groups. I don't think any were nationally known, but one was pretty popular. Um, Ascari X. Okay. And they, he was real. They were really militant and they were affiliated with, uh, the loonies and drew down and, Oh, and Mac Dre. I, yeah. I, I, you might have heard of him, you know, Mac Dre. So they weren't internationally known, but they were known to mar- rock the microphone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They got stupid. Yeah. I mean, outrageous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm just playing. Yeah. Heston Cleveland. All right. <laughs> Let's take it back a little further. All right. You, you, you grew up with a talented mom and dad, but, uh, you know, how was the school life growing up in in, in uh, California? Um, you know, it was it was typical. You know, I was a, a semi-popular uh, teenager. I, uh, I was a a semi athlete. I ran track and, and I was I was pretty good. You know, I was I had a small reputation. You know, you go to the track meets and you hear people whisper, Hey, he's pretty fast <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So I mean, uh I I I hung out with the athletes but then I grew you know, I, I went to a high school that was out of my living area because my father was a probation officer. Okay. And he didn't want me to go to the same schools as his clients, you know, so that got me into a different school. I went to the school that Tom Hanks went to. Okay. You know, so, um, was he one of your classmates? Oh no, Tom Hanks is is quite a bit older than me That's and you. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. So <laughs> when you say you go to Tom Hanks uh, high school, I mean, what kind of uh, residual effect did that have on the school and the people? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I just, didn't affect I just, you I absolutely at all. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just threw it out there. So you say you were track and field as a young man. What was your your yeah. uh, your your favorite thing to do in track and field? Run fast. Run fast. Run far or no, run I, fast I, I short ran, distance? I, I ran I, I ran the hundred, two hundred and four by one hundred relay. Okay, so mostly the short distance, but you were pretty good at it, and the kids all thought you were kind of fast. But you say your dad yeah. was a uh, probation officer at this point. Uh, did he get yeah, out of the music yeah. business by then? No, he was. They that was his uh, work job, and his fun job was, you know, performing. They would he would do the regular nine to five. Yep. And he would come home and go into the studio. You know, sometimes my mom would go back there. The band would come and they would rehearse for up and coming shows. 
or he would have a studio session. That's what you're doing. You know what uh, you're I doing, Hess. You're dropping knowledge on people. You know the the entertainment business can be good, can be uh, can be lucrative, but uh, for the most part, uh, the money's not steady, and you may not have uh, insurance. So, Dad had the day job to take care of that, take care of the family, make sure he had a steady job, yeah. and then the fun job. Hey, he did some music. So you all right? Continue. Yes, you know, but. Knowing my dad, he would play for free. If it wasn't for the lights and, and the water, he would play for free. Because back in the day, they would have what you call jam sessions, where it would be at a particular spot called a hole in the wall, where musicians would come and just jam. That is something I mean, that still happens be, today. Usually on a Sunday night right here in town, Conway, Arkansas, we have a, a jam, the Sunday night jam over at TC's where a bunch of bands from a bunch of people from different bands get together. They learn from each other. Is this the kind of situation that you had? Uh, yeah. But, and, you know, no, no money would be passed around. You just come in, shake your hand and sit down. That's not unusual, you know, and ladies they would and gentlemen. Play, they would play, play, play. And then my mom, you know, it's just my mom and I now. So out the blue, she'll recall some stuff or throw up something uh, that I'm supposed to remember. <laughs> and she'll go, uh, you know, our friends would come over and... Your father would get on the organ or the piano and start playing. And first thing you know, we singing all night long. Oh, and how did that affect young Hess as a child hearing all this good music in the house? You know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I took it for granted. As you said. Like, like I was saying, like I was saying, when they auditioned, at uh, the Claremont, the, at the, the Berkeley, there were some groups, man. Right. I'm like, oh, sh- there's no way they're gonna win this, you know, because it was it was a it was three it was three days, and bands played all day. Yeah. You know, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I could remember midweek, I'm running in the house, running. He says, um, are you going to be around this weekend? Mm-hmm. And I looked at him, yeah. He says, uh, I need you to come with me to set up. We got the job. And I'm like, oh, man. So you okay. Can do a little you know, I was kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't by choice. <laughs> I get it. He told me. <laughs> he told me. You know, but I'm like, hey, you guys, yeah, you guys are pretty good, you know. But I just, to tell the truth, like, um, I started this campaign last September. Right. And I, I, I separated myself from my mom and dad, you know. Mm-hmm. I just listen to the music. <laughs> They're good. I mean, really good. And the more I talk to people, the more they tell me that, man, your mom could sing. Believe and it. I look, at her, you know, I look at her and I go, you can sing. <laughs> and I'll approach someone and ask them for something, and they'll say, sure. And I'll go, man, thank you. <laughs> and they'll say, man, your mom's royalty. She deserves everything. And now I'm at the point where, yeah, my mom deserves everything. And, of course, that's my mom, so I'm not going to hear no. No, you cannot tell me no, man. You're not telling me about my mom. No. <laughs> You're going to do this for me, you know. 
So I didn't know. I didn't really know what was going on when uh, we signed the the distribution deal. Right. I was I was all pumped up. You know, he they announced it on Google. Terry Cleveland reissued, you know, in the bio and everything. And I got all excited. I'm like, oh, yeah. But then two, three months later, he's coming out with somebody else. And I'm like, hold on, man. My mom. What about my mom? Uh, Well, now, don't get me wrong. Carrie is this and that, but. I'm a record company right? and this is what I do. So, you know, reality hit me and I said, well, I have to do this myself. So I, I started and I learned that a lot of indies are, are, are doing it themselves. Okay. So, I met a few people on Twitter. Well, you know, okay, let me go back a little bit. Go ahead. I I realized that I'm I was truly blessed because my mom and dad, I never my dad never hit my mom. Mm-hmm. Of course they would have disagreements. My dad never left the house. They they were they were always together, and then they shared the common goal as musicians. So, my mom and dad loved each other. They both loved music, mm-hmm. and I loved them. Yeah. So, I have the American dream for his family life. <laughs> I'm leaving to Beaver. Okay. <laughs> Gee, Wally. I mean, the American, the American family life, I, that hit me. I'm like, you know, this is a story. Yeah. And after 40 years, my mom's album is selling. Okay, so and this I'm is something like, that you brought you brought to light just recently over the last year or so. You're bringing back yeah. your mom's music, and you're you're she's getting kind of a re- revival. So that's fantastic, man. That's that's something that that a son can do for his mom. Now, is she still around? Yes. Okay, I think I just found a picture of her that you had tweeted out. And she, you know, she was a beautiful lady. She still is a beautiful lady. That's fantastic. Yes, she is. And how does she feel yes, about her her young man, her her little boy all grown up that uh, is helping to, to get her music back out there on the streets to the people? You know, quiet as is kept, she doesn't really say, she doesn't shout it to the rafters, but... She's proud of me, and she'll tell me, and I'll hear her on the phone. Uh, let me get my son, because she'll start telling somebody, and then she'll come get me to finish. Yeah. I mean, this ride has been crazy. I mean, it's to the point where... She's making a comeback. Yeah. Now, does she still have the ability to to get out, at least to sit up on a stage and maybe sing a little bit of what she uh, used to do 40 years ago? 40 years takes a lot of of hurt on somebody. I'm I'm, I'm I'm prejudiced. Okay. You know, so I'm going to say yes, but in reality, yes. Yes, brag on that one. you know, my mom, my my mom is seventy eight years old. Yep. So I had to come. I had to come, and I asked her, "Mom, I'm not going to force you. Now you know what I want you to do. <laughs> do you do you want to do it?" And she said, 
yes, let's do it. Yeah. So I had, um, I befriended uh, somebody on Twitter, and they had uh, a podcast, a weekly podcast on Wednesday. Yes. Um, blog Talk Radio. And he set up where she was, she could sing. So she sung, you know, over the phone on the podcast. And I had a few people listen and they said, she can sing. She still can sing. How beautiful. But, you know, I knew it because we go in the car and we listen to her CD and she sings along with the CD and I'm like she still got it so I befriended um, Brian Hammer Jackson I, I, don't, I don't know if you know him I'm sure but he has a morning up. he has a morning show and his claim to fame is 150 million listeners Excellent. he has a he has a worldwide podcast, and I befriended his producer, uh -huh. and I asked her, you know, is it possible I could come on and do an interview, and I sent her a few articles and a couple of the songs. She said yes, you know, so I come on, and... Brian, he saw the picture of my mom, and he's like, oh, my God, your mom is gorgeous. You know, he went on and on and on. And then he goes, seriously, Heston, are you guys seriously thinking about a comeback? You know, it's, it's a cold world. You know, musicians are, are, are dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I explained to him, I said, man, that's my mom. And I'm not going to let anything happen to her. But, you know, a long story short, you know, we became we became friends where I call I could call in any time and talk to him. So I had promised him the next time I called in, I would have my mom sing. Yeah. And we called in and she sung. And he said, quote. You know, to tell the truth, I didn't think you would be able to do it, honestly, but you've proven me wrong. Yeah. You still got it. Well, that sounds like so, some, some high praise from Brian the Hammer Jackson. Good job. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have to look him up. No, I didn't. I I'm mean, looking at him. him. Yeah. You're looking at him. Okay. Oh, you're fast. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, um, it's, you know, it's funny how the internet works because back in 1980, this is the same music, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't 40 years old. It, it was, it was new. You got a whole fresh and set of ears to listen to the great classics, man. What we call classics is brand new to these kids and they're going to take it and they're going to freshen it up. They're going to be on their ones and twos, their digital wheels of steel, the DJs of today, you know, just like you did back in the eighties, man. You know, I'm learning that cause this, this is all new to me, you, you know, and especially my mom, we, we're talking about now we're talking about my mom. Yeah, you are. You know, and it's, it's, it's hard for me to fathom that because this is my mom. Yeah, the great Carrie Cleveland. I'm looking it. at a poster of her uh, appearing at the Bancroft Street Lounge, and this is back in July 2 of 1980. You know, it says, no cover. Uh, come on over and see the creative set. Carrie Cleveland, the song stylist. Did you do you have the one with uh, uh, Bobby Blue Band? No, I haven't seen that one yet. But I do, you know. I'm, going I'm, to I'm say, looking at some I'll, I'll some great this. posters, and your mom, she's a beautiful lady. My goodness, and I I haven't had the pleasure of listening to her yet. Not, but I certainly will after this podcast is over. I, I will. Uh, uh, 
yeah, treat myself to the song stylings of Carrie Cleveland. Now, did you have yes, any yes. any other music in, inclinations when you were a young lad besides the uh, DJing? Did you ever p- play some music yourself? No, no, no. So, what did you do no, in your I, life? I was, How do you do? Uh, what do you do to to, to uh, thrive and survive, Mister Heston Cleveland? Well, what I do now, or what you okay, did then? Well, before. What I did then, you know, I went to school and I landed an interesting job. I was a doorman in San Francisco Union Square. Huh. Well, you know, I didn't have to have any skills but people. And I know for a fact that I'm I'm very personable and I have a hell of a personality and I can intermingle in any setting, any setting. Right. And that, that's not bragging. That's just telling the truth. No, you seem like a nice so guy. Think, You're talking to me. That sounds great. You're telling the story you. of you and your mom uh, for that matter. Yes. Yes. And you know, um, the people, I'm, you know, I'm bumping my head, feeling my way around Twitter, trying to promote my mom's music, not really knowing what I'm doing and how to go about doing it, because they they keep saying if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. But I'm here to to argue. I'm an opportunist, and. The door opens, I step through, Mm -hmm. you know, because it hit me. You know, I got a story here. And so I start inquiring about a movie because it's it's a movie. I grew up in a, a, a household where my mom and dad had something in common and we all loved each other. My father passed in 94. Oh, rest him. Yeah. Now, check this out. I mess her. You know how you play with the phone and all of a sudden a beanie baby popped up where it was sold for quite a bit. And I kid you not, in my room, I could open this drawer and I have about 40 beanie babies 20 <laughs> years and older. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I did ran that start? In when did you start collecting Beanie Babies? Then my mama did. My oh, mama did. Sweet. And so you know, I ran in the room. I'm like, Mom, look at this. Don't you have this one? It was. It's called Princess Diana. It's a purple little ugly little Beanie Baby. <laughs> okay. And it was worth. It was worth twenty five hundred. What? And she hollered, "Oh, I got that one." So we pulled them out, and we were looking and Googling them and looking. We did that for about three hours. <laughs> so she goes, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'm like, okay. So jokingly, you know, I'm still looking at old stuff. And I said, I laughed. I said, how much is a Carrie Cleveland album worth? Mm-hmm. And... It said four hundred and fifty dollars. Would you stop? <laughs> and I remember seeing a box in the top of my mom's closet, and I'm like, "Mom, that's fifty albums, right?" Uh, and you know, I could add, I could, do, I could, I could do math real good. So I multiplied that, and I'm like. Oh shit! Well, the thing oh, is, me. yeah, the thing <laughs> is, you got to uh, dr- you, you can't put those albums out right away because that's going to drop the price. You put them out one at a time, one at a time. I love put one on eBay. I, I like that. Yeah, you know. So I had a friend that I had reconnected with that was in the music. And he asked me. He said, "Man, are you still DJing?" I'm like, no, man, no, you know, well, I was managing a a reggae group. Okay. I still, I still dabble a little bit 
And I really met them. I didn't know anything about reggae. But I kept going over to their house. And the name of the group was Rankin Screw and Ginger. I like and it. Ginger, she was she was the the keyboardist, and Rankin Screw was the vocalist. So I go in, and it's people in the living room, and she whispers, "Do you know who they are?" I'm like, "No." She said, "Those are the Whalers," and I'm like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> Bob Marley Whalers, you know, because I only know like, <laughs> right, you know, because I only knew like two or three groups, right, and that that was one of them. I'm like, oh my god, she said yes. Rankin's the house band for the Whalers. Whoever comes to town, they look him up. Yeah. So I I met the Whalers. I I met Don Penn. I, I met the great Frankie Paul, you know, just hanging out. And, uh, it, you know, it, I, I've, he, he's really good, but he's practically an unknown. So I started, you know, promoting him. Yeah. Like I'm doing with my mom, so I got I got my mom and Rankin Screw, and I found I found my my niche, you know. Um, now what year I'm is this? Convincing. This is last year. This all started happening real fast. Yeah, it seems okay, like this me, last year has me, been a whirlwind for you. Yeah, you know, uh, let me let me let me let me keep this in 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 order. I apologize Please. for no, jumping no back and forth. No, no problem. Uh, um. So you know, my friend, he took an album and took it to a store in Berkeley because Berkeley is known for vinyl. I mean, you could go to a record stock store. You could buy and sell vinyl. Yeah. So he put a couple in for me on consignment. And he said he was hanging around the store. And all of a sudden, this guy called and says, oh, my God, you got a Carrie Cleveland album. Yeah. Where did you get it from? And he goes, I know the son. So he calls me. And says, man, this guy wants to talk to you. So I said, give him my number. So a week later, he called me. And my mom answered the phone. And she brought it to me. And he goes, it was that Carrie? Carrie Cleveland? Uh, I'm like, yeah. You know, yeah. So he says, I want to reissue the album. Whoa. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, we weren't doing anything with him. Well, I don't, a, I don't uh, know uh, about that. You, you have fifty albums that are pretty close to mint, and they're pretty valuable. What is a reissue going to do to the value of that record? Do you know what that's all about? Nothing. It's not going to drop it in value at all because. It's still 40 years old. Yeah. It's, it's 40 years old. And I joke and say, no fingerprints. Yeah. You say they've been sitting in a box for quite a few years. Sitting in a box with, with plastic, mint condition. I mean, I, I'm looking at you a know, picture so of I'm your beautiful to, mama holding one of her records right there. Yeah. Um, I took her to a, this is this was this was a this was a story where she realized this is really going down. My son lived over by uh, this theater, and it was a guy that bought and sold records. So I say, "Mom, come on, let's go, let's go to this store." 
So I took two albums and we walked into the store. And, you know, I go, hi, how you doing? Um, you buy records? He said, yeah. So I put one on the counter. And before I could turn it around, he stumbles back and he hits the wall. And he goes, that's a Kerry Cleveland album. Where did you get it from? And I'm short, but, you know, my mom is shorter than me. Okay. I, I stepped to the side. And I pointed to her, and he goes, oh, my God, it's you. Yeah. It's you. I thought you were dead. What, and how did, <laughs> what, how did that make your mama feel? I mean, being recognized after all these years. You know, she just now started to realize, hey, this is something. Because we've done, we've uh, did a, a couple of news uh, station interviews, television interviews. So we're pretty popular in the area. And I have a shirt. I have shirts with the album, co- picture of the album cover on it. Yeah. And people will go, I've seen you before. <laughs> and and then they'll go, where's your mom? And I'll point to her and they go, oh, my God, you got a beautiful voice. And then they comment on, oh, you got a great son. He's great. She said, they, they say, how many people, kids, would wear the picture of their mom? <laughs> you know, so I kind of laugh about that. Well, it sounds, sounds, we'll go sounds like your mom had a, you know, had a great effect on quite a few people uh, in her lifetime. And, and it looks like your mom and dad, I mean, cause I know he produced that record. Uh, he, I mean, that, what a great team they became. I mean, what do you know of their story uh, growing up? That's what, that's what I've been, that's what I've been preaching. They were great parents. My dad was the neighborhood dad, you know, because I was an only child and we had a pretty tight knit neighborhood where we would meet up on Saturday, go to the park and we would play street teams. You know, we would, we would play the next block over in football, baseball, or my dad would load us up in the in the van, and we would go to the beach. We would we would go everywhere, and I have friends still today. Like uh, I don't know if you know of him, uh, Sway DJ Sway. Pretty easy to look him up. And yeah, I, he's I'm a, pretty uh, sure I, I've played a few of his his tracks. I I know he's got uh, what has he got? Oh my goodness, he's got like some dance music uh, that I've played over the years. Uh, well, he 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 used to de- rapper his stations, and he does a, a a morning podcast now in New York, and he was a television DJ for BET 106 in Park. That's where I've heard of him. Okay, that's that's yeah. where the name is familiar. And now I'm looking at him. I'm looking looking him up here. American journalist, yeah. radio personality, executive producer, and rapper known as Sway. Yeah, yeah. And anytime I needed anything, he would he would help me out. And I asked him. I said, "Hey, it's, it's Jonathan White. Why are you doing that?" And he said, Heston, I, my father wasn't in my life, and your father took time out with me. Oh. And that meant a lot to my brother and I. And, you know, it, it, brought, it brought tears to my eyes that my father affected people like that. Because, like I said, he was the neighborhood dad. 
and I'll see my old friends, and they'll share a story. Remember when this? And we would laugh, laugh, and they say, I miss your dad, man. And I'm like, you, I miss him. Yeah. You know, I was, I was talking to my oldest friend. I've known him for 50 years. And I'm te- I was telling him about the music, and he goes, man, I've been there since day one. <laughs> and I'm like, you have, because he lived two doors away, and he heard the bass in the studio as much as I heard it, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, it's just funny how the Internet, has made it so much better for good music to be shared because I'm, I have met this last year. I have met so many good people. Um, I did when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, people would go, I'm going to tag you. Yeah. And I'm like, what's tag? What's that? It's what you, know, you do, so man. To, it helps spread the word. I've been retweeting you know, some of your Google. tweets all uh, for the last few uh, last hour or so. Yeah, you know, I'm good at it now, but I didn't know start last year. <laughs> and uh, RT, what the hell is RT? Yeah, that's a retweet. You got that right. I, yeah, you know, I know that now, but when I started, that's how I started. I didn't know. <laughs> so I met this I met this one young lady named Kimberly. We talked in uh in the direct messages and she says, I'm gonna help you fix your page. Cause I had um uh, my picture with a bunch of money behind it. She said, Take that money off. You need to be more commercial. Right. Maybe put a picture of your mom behind you, you know. So I went on and did that. And I put my twin my 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 pin tweet there and I I messaged her and she says, That's beautiful. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. So then, you know, she told me to rotate stuff and make sure you have your mom's music in sight, you know. Okay. So I start I started reading different people pages seeing what they did and I would ask so how could I get my mom on your podcast or how could I have you play my mom's music and I would send it to them and at first you know they wouldn't accept it but then all of a sudden it's I started growing because I was stuck on like 200 followers for quite some time. Right. So I started following, 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 following. And then I saw uh, this contest. And I was thinking, well, my mom's music is old and these people probably don't even listen to this music. So I put what I thought was her best song in the podcast, I mean, in the uh, contest. And Friday morning, well, Thursday night comes, and they say, congratulations, you made it into the top 40. How sweet is that? You know, and I'm like, that's beautiful. So I had a doctor's appointment, and I couldn't listen to the show. So I messaged them and I said, well, can you please tell me what place my mom is in? And they said, you can see for yourself. And I sent them a picture in the doctor's office. Yeah. And I said, well, can you please tell me I have, I can't look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the doctor. And they laughed and they sent me, she's number 30. Whoa. You know, so sarcastic, sarcastically, I said, uh, is that good? 
you know, and he said, come on, man. We get over a thousand submissions a week. Yeah. Your mom, your mom placed number 30 her first time. That's amazing. And, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, they like it. So I got, my chest got a little bigger, so I put another song in. Yeah. And then that went to 23. What? And I'm like, they like my mom's music. What's not to like? So, you know, but I mean, see, that's where it comes back to, that's my mom. Yeah. You don't know her like you know, that. That's just it. She's just your mom. You don't know she's that's, a superstar. No. So, long story short, two weeks ago, her song placed number one. Yeah. How does that number feel? Number one. I laid in bed and cried. Yeah. I cried because... I know what it meant to my father. Yeah. If you knew my father, you would cry too. Well, I know you're, if, from what you said, your dad was a great dad, man. Took you out to play and took the neighborhood kids out to play. I mean, it looks like he t he made some time for you. Whether he was working the, the day job or trying to do some studio work, he still made time for baby Hess. Yes, he did. and And, you know... I get so emotional talking about him because I know how how blessed I am. That's why I'm pushing this campaign. Uh, it's nothing that's going to stop me. I look at Spotify. My mom has over 300,000 streams right now. It's slowly growing and growing, and people have inquired about a biopic, you know, um, uh, a movie. I, I jokingly said, this is a lifetime movie. Well, I mean, if not even that, if it's a documentary, if it's a movie, somebody's going to put that story out there. And it looks like you are going to put that story out there. You're pushing that story. You know, I, and I have my own little online radio station. Uh, you know, who knows what that can do. But I'd be honored to play your mom's song, of course. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I want to put it on rotation uh, on RadioWhat.com for sure. Man. Well, you tell me what I need to do to get you to do that. Oh, well, just to say, if you, if you want to send me the songs, that's fine at keysdan at AOL.com. But I'll, I'll text you all that, man. But uh, okay. I, I'm learning about you, uh, Heston Cleveland. And through, I, I mean, the, just you you became a good person because of that, man. And you had the pride. It, I could hear it in your voice. The, the pride that you have in your mom and dad and, and you know, any other family members that, that you have in your life that, that have helped you along the way or any other people that have helped you along the way, Heston Cleveland? Well, truthfully, no. <laughs> He's a self-made man. <laughs> you know, um, I'm a, okay. I always been the person that would start something and not finish it. Right. I give up. But you know, my dad was my best friend. Yeah. I was the I was the best man when they remarried. You know, um Well tell me about they that. got married they got married twice. Oh, all right. You know, so my dad asked me to be the best man. How sweet. You know, uh, even as my marriage was failing. Oh. You know, because that's all. I, I just wanted to be to be them. You know, um, I had one son. He had me. And... I just wanted I just wanted a family like that. 
but it wasn't it wasn't meant to be at that time. Yeah. So, you know, my dad died, and yeah. I still think of him. And when this came about, I knew how my dad loved music. And it, like you said, it's pretty good. So I dedicated myself to making sure the world could hear his music. Yeah. Well, and sounds like they made a good team, like, man. You know, that what that's what consumes me right now. I wake up promoting. I mean, I'll I'll email radio stations, send the MP three, send the artwork, wait for them to message me back. Right now I could honestly say my mom's music is playing all over the world. Yeah. Well, that's the and, thing about this know, internet. Every song ever made pretty much is out there. Uh, if not on, it's on Spotify, there. it's on YouTube at least. Yeah. And, you know, I had no idea that my mom music had been on there for a long time. Oh, yeah. Where where it been playing, people been buying her music off of eBay, collectors have it, and we had to fight to stop people from, from streaming it, you know, and getting paid for it, so uh, we had to go through that, you know, a cease and is this, I, I guess I'm saying it right. Right. And was your mom uh, able, able to collect some of the money that, that she's due, I suppose, from all the, the sales and the, the streams? You know, it's, it was a minimal amount. It was it was really small. Now, the, the problem I'm having now is I rushed and we signed the contract, mm. not knowing what we got into. So now I I have to go through the distributor myself and in order for us to make some real money we have to do record signing parties where my mom authenticates the record. See, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking when you said reissue that's going to devalue your records, man. And, and what are you going to get from that? What is your your mom going to get from a, a reissue? I, I I know the record business can be shady, man. And sometimes it, it slaps you in the face, man. And it sounds like that's what happened, Hess. Yeah, that's what, you know, that's what happened. We signed a contract where we get 50-50 after expenses. Right, which means you're going to you get know, Zippo because 50 is going to be expenses. Yeah, you know, so I've been hearing that, but I, 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 t I tell my friends, I can't, man, I can't let that stop me. It's not going to stop me. So the record company says it's worldwide, but... It's not worldwide because we live here in the Bay Area. Right. And it's only a couple of record stores that have access to my mom's records. Well, I mean, if they got so, Apple iTunes or, or Spotify or yeah. any of those CD oh, yeah. babies, you know, they can get them. She, she's um, on all uh, digital platforms. Right on all digital platforms, but like streams, you're only getting like point zero zero eight. Better than zero. Hopefully everybody yeah. streams and puts that uh puts that song on their playlist, on their own personal playlist and that way it just keeps playing and playing and playing, man. Get your mama some money. You know well we're averaging 
a thousand streams a day now. I've been, you know, I've been monitoring it. Good. You know, because it's my mom, yeah. <laughs> and I, I do, I do everything. I look. I we've been averaging eight hundred to a thousand streams a, a day. Not too shabby. Now I don't have a song that's doing that. <laughs> Go get you it. know, you know, um, the fast money comes with the hard copy sales. I'm learning. Right. So, I told the record company the other day. There's no law about me buying a record, is it? And he says, no, but I would prefer that you let the record stores buy them. I'm like, no, man, I'll buy them and I'll put them in the record stores myself. Now, I, I got one record store. Shout out to Hercules Records yeah. in Berkeley. Represent. He's going to be he's going to be our flagship store. He's going to host a record signing party at his store. My mom is going to perform one or two songs, you know, a, a short set, Excellent. and she's going to sign records. Well, yesterday was so, Small Business Saturday. I encourage you to go to Hercules and support that small business. Oh, I do. I talk to him. Oh, Every, no, no, I'm no, talking to all the point. listeners. Oh, okay. Yeah, y'all listening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, like that's another thing I want to talk about. The people that have approached me and shared their love and advice and knowledge to me has been amazing excellent like one uh radio station i asked him you know i say can you play my mom's music and he said heston i i love your mom's music but i can't do it and he wouldn't tell me why but he did, you know, he re retweeted my whole page and did a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I said, what? And I asked him his name and he said, uh, Arthur. And I said, can I call you Art? He said, sure you can, Heston. I said, Art, why did you do that? He said, man, because I love my mom like you love yours. Oh. You know, and just this week, I... um did a deal with uh, J.J. Kane new music review where she plays the music Africa, Asia, mm -hmm. Canada, Brazil, London, France. She has uh, radio stations all over the world. And I see a uh, uh, art, art, uh, on her list, you know, cause she's emailed me all the, the radio stations that play, you know, that's going to play it. Yeah. And so I message art. I say, Hey art, I finally got on your playlist, you know, and laugh <laughs> and he laughed, he laughed and he says, I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but I figured out that. She has an exclusive contract with all these, a lot of radio stations, a lot of them that I've been emailing, trying to get in that wouldn't accept me. But now I know why. So, you know, it's, 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 it's funny. I met, uh, you know, I noticed who follows who. When, when one person likes something of yours, 10 of their followers are, are like it. Mm. So I met this lady named Levy Perry. She's a female vocalist from London. Okay. And I talked to her. And I went on her page 
and I pulled up a song on on Spotify, and I'm like, oh, she, you, you can sing. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, you really can sing. And I told her she sounded like Barbara Streisand. Wow. That's high praise. That's high praise. You know. And she says, thank you, but I don't think so. And I'm like, okay, well, that's my opinion. <laughs> well, she's going to hard on herself, that's for sure. You know, oh, yeah, she's a beautiful lady, a beautiful person. I haven't heard her voice. All I see is the black and white writing from her. Mm. And I consider her a friend. Sweet. She always looks out for me. I always greet her when I see her online. It's a few people. It's a few people I met like that. Like I met a, a guy. His real name is Kale. But his Twitter name is Future Guru okay. One Hundred. Okay. You, if you look at my page, you probably seen him on there. I'm sure I'll find him. Uh, his uh, gender is hip hop. Yep. But I like what I read on his page, and I asked him, "Could he help me?" And you know, if he 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 says, "Man, this is a business. If you're not willing to spend any money, I I can't help you." You know, I understood that, and I sent him an article from a guy named named Tim Harold mm -hmm. that I gave him. He did a nice article. I sent him uh, an original copy. And people were like, man, you crazy. You spent a lot of money. Yeah, you crazy. I'm like, I, I, by any means necessary. And I really liked what he wrote. Yeah. So he goes, oh, okay, so you serious. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not playing, man. This is my mom we're talking about. You're going to you're going to hear me say that a lot. This oh, is my mom. It is your you mom. You know, you got to be you, know, you got to be careful, man. This this yeah. record business, I don't know too much about it, but I know it could be shady. We've already it's, said that. It's shady. Yeah. You know, I've been burnt a couple of times. No, don't, don't get me wrong. I okay. bumped my head. Yeah, hopefully but, you learn from that. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, so future guru he listened to the to the to the music, and he goes, "Oh my God, man! The band is 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 on point. Your mom's got a golden voice. I'll help you." Yeah. So he knows the music industry. He knows it backwards and forwards. Um. So I was. He he told me, oh, man, you need to call into the podcast and and see what we're about. Right. So I call I called in and I I met the co-hosts and you know we talked a little bit and I kept in touch with him because you know you go monthly. So I think the third or fourth week, I said, man, uh, I have that payment for you in a day or two. He said, man, you know what? I don't want your money. I'm going to help you, man. I see big things coming. And I'm like, wow, really? He's, and I woke up that Wednesday, and it their podcast post said, talking today to Heston Cleveland music manager, about the music business. Oh, well, that sounds like a win. Yeah, it was a win. And, you know, he did, they didn't know how familiar I was with uh, a lot of the rappers here in, in Oakland because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of rappers come from Oakland. Like, you know, Too Short, Sway, E-40, uh, a bunch of them, and I know them all. 
Yeah. And they was like, man, you know all of them. I'm like, yeah. And then I met quite a few because of my work. You know, I, like I said, I was a doorman in Union Square. And every year in February, they had the big music convention, the Gavin convention. Uh-huh. So, I mean, we were one block from the main hotel. So a lot of rappers and singers stayed at our hotel. I met Pebbles. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, Guru. I met Run DMC. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, LL Cool J. Yeah, a lot of West Coast right there. Yeah, you know... Uh, E V E. Uh-huh. Uh of course, well I knew um Tupac, you know, I knew him. Yeah. And uh Money B, uh Rankin Screw uh did a couple of songs with Money B. So I hung out with them. You know, I was I had you know, I know a little bit about the music industry, but I really didn't know the behind the scenes, the marketing part. Right. As a DJ I, in the 80s, you can you can learn the music. I mean, I started DJing in 86. Of course, I haven't given it up. I'm not giving it up. I'm not doing it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. You know what? I sure wish I did. I sure wish I did. I, yeah. I miss it. But You're you know, not too old for this. I, I lost interest when... They went to CDs. You know, once they got rid of the vinyl, I yeah. just couldn't. I couldn't see myself DJing. Oh man, I was good. My hand-eye coordination was. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I was show. I was a show DJ. Ah oh, man, I. I was good. I had a <laughs> reputation. If uh, I, was I don't, doing I don't think party, I was the best, but uh, you know, I, I gave up my techniques back in '99. I I knew how to go <laughs> one and two, but uh, you know, right. I did CDs one one party, and I didn't like it, so I, I went to MP3s. Right. Man, now I'm, you know, now I use the MP3s with the controllers, and that's that's the way to go because you can you can get the songs f- faster, and, and you can get yeah. more variety. That's what the kids want: more variety. You know, when you, when you were a DJ with the uh, with the vinyl, you you had a couple of crates, and that's all the kids are going to hear that day because you didn't have anything yeah. else. You had those two crates yeah. of music, maybe one crate. <laughs> no, I had six or seven crates. Ah. I was tired. I was tired at two, three in the morning. <laughs> you better believe it, man. If you got to p- hump all that stuff by yourself, I mean, uh, yeah, I used to take maybe one, maybe two, and I think maybe three crates at the most. But uh, for the most part, it was maybe two crates. <laughs> Man, you know, I, D- I DJ so much that I would play a game. Pick a record. Right. Okay, they pick a record. I say, okay, give me 40 minutes. Where do you want this record to play in this mix? <laughs> you know, it was, then it was easy. No, I'm not going to put it at the beginning because right. that that's too easy. Right. Tell me the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth song just to like that. And yeah, I mean, that's I to, to let them know that you're doing it live, of course, man. Yeah, you know, I would do that. And I say, how long you would want each song to play? I said, I can play 30 songs in 15 minutes. Get out of here. No, watch me. <laughs> well, I mean, you it, technic, technically, it's 15 songs an hour if you play them all the way through. But, yeah, yeah that, but that's you know, fitting a lot no. of little little bits in, in, those, in, yeah. in those 15 minutes. That's for sure. And you could, you could snap your finger to the rhythm through all of them. I wouldn't miss a beat. I used to play a game where I'd keep it all at 128 a minute or 135 a minute. And the whole party would be, you know, three hours of 128 a minute and be like, is that the same song you've been playing all night long? Right, right. 
<laughs> they be tired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put a slow jam on for me. Okay, no problem. We got Yeah, that. let me sit down. You know, <laughs> uh, I would do stuff like that. and But, you know, like, to show you how popular my dad was. Yeah. Uh, Tower of Power used to come by the house. Yeah. Now and you're then, talking. believe it or not, In Vogue came to the house. I believe it. Why would you lie? That's beautiful. Yeah, because yeah, I sure don't want nobody to call me and tell me you lying. Uh-uh. But no. They came to the house, and it was a, 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 a short story. My best friend played uh, baseball. Yeah. And, you know, we would sit, we had a, a a good seat, you know, a special section where all the player family would sit. And so um, the lead singer for En Vogue was married to one of the players. So I sat two seats over from her. And I go, Cindy. And she looked at me and like, you know, okay, you know you know my name, but you know, of course I know your name, you're in vogue. Right. But I said, You remember me? And she looked at me like, remember what? I said, You used to come to a a, a garage studio in East Oakland. I said, your manager name was Charles. <laughs> and she looked, she said, oh, yeah. And we start talking and laughing. Ah, uh, you know, my dad, my, my dad was uh, before his time. And I had, a, I had a friend that my father taught how to play. Mm-hmm. And he wrote a couple of songs for Too Short. And he says, I want you to come with me to this to the studio. It was at um, Sausalito. And the Sausalito is an island off of the Golden Gate Bridge. All right. You know, and it was a state-of-the-art studio. So we go there and sit down, and Too Short was just staring at me. <laughs> now, you know, I know him. So I'm like, man, why are you looking at me like that? And he said, your dad still got them record cutters. And I just fell out the seat laughing because my dad, I don't know where he got them from. He bought two record cutters. Uh-huh. And he called himself <laughs> Trying to press records. Okay. That's what I thought a record cutter was. I yeah, didn't press a record myself. Said, you know, uh, uh, oh, man, he was like, he'd come give me, come check this out. And it would, it would play, you know, but then it, eventually it would slide all across. Aww. He said, I'm getting better. You know, I'm getting better. And I laugh, you know. And it was funny because Too Short remembered that. And I just got a kick out of that. I'm like, my dad really had an a, a influence on you guys. Because, like, my friend that he taught, he taught two, he taught three of my friends. And all of them have a platinum record by one way or the other. That's great, man. Well, it sounds like your dad tried tried some things, man. Uh, you know, before there were CDs, there was records. So, yeah, if you could press your own records, you, you might be able to put something out independently. But uh, I don't think that was always an easy thing to make your no, own it vinyl records, it, man. <laughs> you, you know, because it was it was almost like how Motown was. You know, uh, you come in. I can sing. Um, here's my record. Can you play it? Right. And you, you know how long, how many DJs uh, for radio stations heard that line. So uh, 
stepping out of the box, I could relate to them. Okay, yeah, just leave it there. I got that a lot. Because, and when I was working on the know, radio in Miami, I got that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Here's my yeah, record. Will you, you play don't it for me? Be, you don't want to be rude. Yeah, just leave it there. I'll get to it when I get to it. Well, you truthfully, know, so. for the for the most part, especially when I was working on one station where it was only a, it was a mom and pop owned uh, station, mm-hmm. I was able to play almost any song that was ever put uh, in front of me. You know, if I thought it sounded good, I would put it right on, man, no problem. And that's that's what I like, man. I miss those days. I, I you know, now it's all corporate, and there's a reason that that guy couldn't play that song on the radio. It's probably because he was corporate radio, and he didn't have the opportunity or the freedom to play your mom's song. You know, right? But then you know what? You have to take in consideration. Even if you had the freedom, did you have the time? There's always time, a, man. There's always time. I throw it on rotation. Shoot. Uh, you know, you know <laughs> I, I'm having an uh, issue because I only have two ears. And I could, I could some, you know, being a DJ, I could hear two different songs at the same time. But not much more than that. And... Like I was saying, literally, my mom's music is being played all over the world, and that's where we're. That's what we're talking about. Is your mom and, Heston Cleveland and, talking about Carrie Cleveland, and even Bill Cleveland? About, you know, I'm talking dad. about my mom. You know, and I my day my, my day starts at. Okay, I'll give you the rundown to today. Go. I got up at I got up at four thirty. Okay. I got up at four four thirty this morning. <laughs> Before uh, the sunshine came up, what did you do? Oh yeah. Checked checked uh, my my messages on Twitter. Checked my emails. Uh, see who played my mom's song. Commented and thanked them for playing it. Yeah. And then uh, I would get tagged for an up-and-coming show. Now, the problem is a lot of people you have to trust. But you at least want to hear one show, you know, to make sure that they are playing it. Now, I have I have put my foot in my mouth a few times. <laughs> Man, I thought you was going to play my mom's music. Yeah. Heston, it's been in rotation for over a week. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. the thing. Uh, my my in- internet station, it it tweets every time it plays a song. So you'll know, you'll know when I'm playing your mom's music. <laughs> you'll know when it's on RadioWhat.com because it'll tweet you right know. at you. Right. You know, that's what I've been asking a lot of them. I say, can you uh, tag me when uh, you play the song? Well, a lot of people don't have that technology. They're, they'll be able to play it, and sometimes it'll right. tweet, but you have to set it up to tweet at somebody. So, I mean, that you know what's funny? That future that future guru 100, he, he already tweeted at me. He's following me on Radio What Twit. How about that? <laughs> Here we are we're talking about him a little bit. You know, because... That's, you know, I met, I met him about four months ago. Yeah. And we have the same common goal. And that's, that's this music. You know, he has the same vision I have because we, we sit up and talk like how you and I are talking right now. Yes. And He's he has more knowledge of the music industry than than I do, and he tells me, man, this is what we need to do. Are we going to get your mom's Spotify up, her YouTube up? And I'm like, okay, because you know my mom has a video of Northern Soul Girl dancing. Yeah. And it's a, it's 
it's pretty close to 600,000 views. Excellent. You know, and I would tell you another thing. I met um, Paul, Paul Ben. He was the lead singer of the Platters. Okay. I mean, you know, we, we, when you've been around as long as us, uh, I, you start to meet people. <laughs> it sounds like you, you've met some people along the way. So what did this Paul do This is on Twitter. This, was, this has been in the last month. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, he followed me, and I followed him back, and I I messaged him. And I said, well, you know, I looked him up. I'm like, the platters? Wait a minute. The platters? Yeah, the platters. And I Googled his name, and it said all of that. And I'm like, oh, man. So I texted him. I said, man, thank you for following me. It's an honor. Wow. And he, he texted me back, no, it's my honor. And so, you know, uh... I run and tell my mom, mom, uh, 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 the platters, and she starts singing the songs. Oh, they sung this one, they sung that one, they sung this one. <laughs> so we started looking at his page, and I DM'd him. I said, um, man, my mom loves your music, man. She wanted me to ask you, were you still singing? And he says, man, I retired this year. You know, he had, he spent time with me. Yeah. And so he says he does a, a Saturday Chronicle um, podcast in the morning. Uh-huh. And, you know, he was, he was, he politely was telling me he had to go. And I'm like, man, it was a pleasure talking to you. Maybe I could have my mom on your show one day. How sweet is and that? And 30 minutes later, he messaged me back. He says, forgive me for my ignorance. Your mom sings? And I'm like, man, I thought that's why you followed me. <laughs> and he says, no, man, I just saw your face. And you look like a cool person, so I followed you. Yeah. You know, truth and, be you know, told, said, well, truth be told, that's why I followed you, man. You seem like a cool person. And I saw Carrie get Cleveland in your background there, and I went, huh, Carrie Cleveland, Heston Cleveland, that's pretty cool. Let me get to know a little bit more about Heston Cleveland, because, you know, Carrie's famous, but Heston, you're pushing, I mean, you're you're pushing her music, but you're also pushing other people's. You're you, you, you're starting to uh, to do this East Oakland music management. What yeah. are you doing with that? Well, I'm like you said. I'm pushing my mom's music so good. I'm making headways. All my friends are looking at me. I got a lot of friends that are in music. Now the 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 plan is to have my mom sing again. Right. And I have, I know a few musicians. I have a friend that's in two acapella groups. And I, I, I'm like, B, where are you? He says, man, I'm in Germany. I'm like, get the, out of here. <laughs> he said, yeah. I'm like, wow. You know, we, my mom and I went to see him perform with his group. In Germany? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> you know, in Oakland. In All right. Oakland. Well, that's in good, Oakland, man. You know. It sounds like your your management is, is primarily helping your mom, uh, and hopefully it expands a little bit, and you can help some some well, other people along the way as well. You know, it, it's, you know, my mom said that. She said, you know, you're good. You need to do that. Yeah. So I, I picked up uh, my friend Rankin Screw. Yep. Which is I don't know why he's not famous, but I, now that I know the, the, the music industry, I know why. It's because he's tried to do everything himself. He performed, he writes the lyrics, plays the instruments, does the business. 
it's no way a, one human being could wear all them hats. No, there's not. There's only you can only get so far by yourself. They need a Heston That's Cleveland. It. They need a music manager, just somebody to to give a little push to to be the mouthpiece, man. Because you can't drive all over the place. You can't make phone calls all the time. That's what they need no. a, a manager for. Uh, you know, because because they're busy creating. They're busy making the poems, making the lyrics to make into songs, you know, and you are going to help to sell that, man. And that, that I think that's your next your next stage in life. You know, yes, you're putting your mom out yep. there and and so good that she's getting some airplay and hopefully she makes a couple bucks off of that as well. But but Heston Cleveland, I I think you need to take some more people under your wing cuz you got a passion for this, man. You do. I do, you know, and Rankin Screw, he, once I got in, he said, what I tell you five years ago? Didn't I tell you that you would be good at this? Didn't I tell you? And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, it's fun. Because, okay, to get through the door, my mom has, okay, my mom is the trailblazer. Yeah. I didn't cut down the weeds. I'm leading the pack with her. My, that logo, that picture on that album is literally known all over the world. They'll, they'll look at it and go, that's Carrie Cleveland. And then when they hear the song, I I just step back and wait for the, oh, my God. <laughs> so, so she's your first think, client, man, but you're going to have more. Mm-hmm. There's more on oh, the yeah. horizon for Heston Cleveland. There's more. Two days ago. Uh, a woman I I met befriended on Twitter. I like her music. Yeah, and she told me you're doing you're doing hella good. <laughs> if I had a promoter like you, I'm like, well, I like your music. Send me a song. We'll let's see what happens. Yeah. So I put I picked her up. I got. Three other groups now, but I'm I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it kind of small uh, because uh, this is this is my mom. Enough is almost overwhelming. Like I said, uh, I just signed for her to get on radio play all over the world. Not one, but two stations and. Another guy I met, he gave me this 222 flagship songs where it's 222 podcast radio magazines. Yeah. And I'm on 51. And I'll send six songs to each one that fits my gender. Excellent. Because, you know, like, I got one rap group, I got a, a reggae group, and then I have my mom, classic soul, disco slash R&B. Excellent. Some of them take, some of them take just one, some of them take all. So I'll get an email. Um, What's the name of the artist? And did you send the artwork? And I have to ask them, oh, which, which one? You know, so it's, it's, it, it, I'm still not as organized as I should be, but I am having fun. Yeah. I am, I am, I am having a lot of fun and I, I'm, I'm still humble, but I'm, I, I guess you could say I'm confident because my mom is royalty. I've been told that too many times, and especially from overseas, London, right. France, uh, Australia. I met a, a a young lady on Instagram where she messaged me, and you know we went through the small talk. So where do you live? She says, uh, Germany. And I'm like, you are really late. <laughs> and she goes, 
how do you know that? And so I told her, I said, well, I'm managing my mom's reissued album. And I talked to a lot of people over there. And she goes, what's your mom's name? I go, Carrie Cleveland. And she goes, oh, yeah, she's a legend. Yeah. I'm like, what? You, you know of her? Yeah. I love her music. Uh, I'm like, wait a minute. Now, here we go again. You're talking about my mom. <laughs> You're talking about my mom. And I look at my mom, and I'm like, I remember you singing. I think you sound good. But to hear somebody else say it, it just it just amazes me. And I'm like, you're talking about my mom. Yeah. And my dad, oh my God, he was he was the best key uh keyboard player I ever heard. And he's the one doing the, the synthesizer on all of her tracks, right? Every instrument. Right. He did it all Every on synthesizer, word, all keyboard. I'm left hand, right hand. Oh my god! <laughs> I used to before. Okay, he had a heart attack. Oh. In December. Yeah. And he born. lived. Yeah, and he lived to March. Oh. He would lay in bed when, because like I worked swing shift. So I would be home during the day and my mom would come home about four thirty and you know I would leave about two. This is your doorman job you were doing? Yeah. yeah. And he would say, uh, set up the keyboard for me. I get up and set it up and he would play and he would bring me out of my room and I would just Stand there with my mouth open, and he had this smirk. And I'm like, man, you bad. I just shake my head. <laughs> uh, he was real. He was really good. He had an entourage. Everywhere he went, he had an entourage. Mm. And at his work and as a musician. Right. My dad was a, was a, was a leader of... Uh, take charge type guy and he would make you feel like you were the only one in the world now I didn't realize that until he died because I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to switch it up because I was addicted to a few things unfortunately I'm, uh, I'm afraid to say Hmm. And I'm just saying this to tell you a story. Okay. I got off of work because I kept my job because I wasn't a street hustler. I worked for my drugs. You know, I, I get my paycheck and then I go run and do my drugs. So I met this guy. You know, I gave him something to take me home. And my father, I think, had been gone a year. And he was he was talking about my dad, not knowing that that was my dad. And he said, man, I love that man. He died, blah, blah, blah. And I knew because he said the date. I knew who it was. And I said, uh... What was his name? He said, man, but he was, he was my dad, but he wasn't my dad. Mm. But he treated me like his son, and I loved him. And I said, Bill Cleveland. And he looked at me, he said, man, how did you know? I said, because your dad was my dad. Oh. And he was like, oh, man. And we sat there. We pulled over and cried, 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 cried. 
So I cleaned myself up, you know, and I think it it made me a better it made me a better person that I experienced that because before I got addicted, I used to look down on people until I got addicted and I was out there with my peers and I was I was in the street I wasn't the street wise so a few people took care of me you know they liked me cuz I'm I'm a likable person yeah. and they would tell me you need to go home man you don't need to be out here so I cleaned myself up and I would drive down the streets in Oakland and my mom would be with me. And I'm like, hold on. And she said, where are you going? I said, I seen a friend. I hit the corner, pull over, jump out the car, hug him. I mean, you all right? You need a couple of dollars. I mean, it really made me a better person. You're a good dude. I guess, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a life lesson and... God showed me that way, you know, because like I, I should be dead to tell the truth. I got caught in a few situations mm. where I just took that sigh and go, okay, if this is how it's going to end, this is how it is. But I'm here talking to you. So God gave me a reason to be here. And I pr- I'm pretty sure I I found that reason. Um, I have a friend that wants me to do some motivational speaking to some street kids. So with my newfound lease on life and my determination now, like this is all happening within the last year and a half. Because I've learned that hard work and dreams come true. If you believe, if you you get out, I can get out of bed. I, I'm I'm di- I'm on disability. Mm. I I don't feel one hundred percent. I'll never be one hundred percent. I have spinal stenosis. Oof. I used to be a track star. Now I can barely walk a straight line. And this happened when I hit 50. Yeah. And my dad died at 53. My uncle died at 52. So I always thought that I wasn't going to live much longer. Yeah, you definitely when made, I hit, make a decision. Turn it around a little bit. And it looks you like know, that's what you I, did. You know, that's what I did. Um, and I look at I look at life a lot different. It's a, a picture on my on my page where if you if you stumble, get up, don't give up. Tomorrow is another day. Yeah, and. Every day I get out of bed is a good day. No matter how bad I feel, if I could get up, I could always make it better. Man. That's how I look at that's how I look at life. And now the popularity with my mom's music. Yeah. And now me talking to you is is proving me right. Heston Cleveland, you cannot end it better than that, man. It sounds like you've you've come up from hardships, but you're putting all your focus into your mom's music and beyond, man. Tell the people how, how to get a hold of you and how, how do you want them to connect to you and find out more about Heston Cleveland and about Carrie Cleveland and, and Bill Cleveland, for that matter, and find out more about you. What's going on in your situation? Okay. um, You could message me on Instagram, 
Heston dot Cleveland on Twitter at Cleveland Heston. Uh, my Gmail is Heston Cleveland five. You could also find me at CC Cleveland Music. That's that's my mom's Twitter page that she's never seen. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, also, uh, Future Guru 100. All right. All right. Heston Cleveland, it's been an honor and a pleasure talking to you. Uh, you have any last words for the people? Uh, listen to the album. Support my mom. Spotify. SoundCloud. YouTube. Check out the story. It's it's uh, on my page. There's um, a few articles. You could YouTube her, and there's a television interview. You could Google her. There's a Fox News interview. It's a hell of a story. It's not just the music. It's 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 the American dream, uh, a, a family love story. Well, there you have it, party people. Heston Cleveland. Yeah. Can you hear the passion that he has for his mama and his dad? Can you hear it? Yes. Find the music of Carrie Cleveland all over the interwebs. I, I found her whole album on YouTube, and it's right there. I find it on Spotify as well. You can buy the album, uh, buy the vinyl, buy the CD, uh, buy it on iTunes. You can get it. Carrie Cleveland, and I see nothing but great things in the future for Heston Cleveland. He's turned his life around. Hey, he, I don't, I don't know where these stories are going to go. And at the end, he gave a little, little bit of, of a personal uh, demon that he was battling, and it looks like he's come through it on the other side, man, helping people out. I appreciate you chit chatting with me, Heston Cleveland. I appreciate you, man. And your mom, for that matter. And, uh, you know, big ups to your dad. They had a great relationship making music together. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Creators. Thanks again, Heston Cleveland, for being on the program, What Makes You Famous. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you. Give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at RadioWhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at Makes Famous. And follow on YouTube at Keys Dan. Leave What Makes You Famous podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Famous podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and almost anywhere you find podcasts. Tell your story on my podcast, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you famous podcast is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening radio what the music you want with another great quote you've got to dance like there's nobody watching love like you'll never be hurt sing like there's nobody listening and live like it's heaven on earth william h perky the music you want is on RadioWhat.com. Be on Radio What. Call 501-470-6386. Say your name, where you're from, and you're listening to What? The music you want is on RadioWhat.com. <laughs>